cracking, eh, guys? What's cracking? It is very cold. I have a snotty nose. Oh dear. Today, I thought I would come down to the harbour for sunrise to take a shot for a jigsaw. So we're going to talk about jigsaws today and how you compose, uh, what's important for a jigsaw um, and where you might uh, get one created and what you might need to look for as you do that. Uh, but let's talk about the photography thing first. Behind me are a thousand kind of sailing ship yacht boat kind of deals with lots and lots of masts which makes for a very busy subject which is what you need when you come to sunrise uh, jigsaw photography you need busy uh, you can't rely on the sky for busy you want busy from the sky but you can't rely for it <laughs> there's, there's an arctic wind coming off that water oh boy oh boy so i'm gonna set up and have a play with a bit of composition it's very dark it's 5 45 sun comes up at 7 30 uh, you have to be early because you want to get all the options of the sky as they present themselves. And I don't know where the sun's rising. I looked at photopills before, I'd show you, but photopills says the sun rises here. I thought the sun would rise about here. So we'll see who's right and whether I should become the permanent photopills or whether I should just keep quiet. I think we both know the answer to that. And it's not me becoming photopills. <coughs> And finally, I just went into the service station here, Ampol, and this was the devastating news. Let's talk about composition for a minute. So, our subject is the boats just here. I'm going to shoot in a 24 to 70 today because my subject is quite close to me, and that's what's important. Uh, so, what I'm not going for is a big landscape vista. That's not the intent today. The intent is to get the detail of the boats. So, with the 24 to 70, you have lots of options. And so, I start off with this, and to me, it feels like, well, I've got to get the exposure and everything right. But the the thing on the right, the yacht center on the right, seems like it attracts a lot of attention away from the yachts. It's very important to have that foreground, so you have something busy. I do like the reflection of the boats, but it also creates a lot of sky. And the problem with sky in jigsaws is when you've just got all blue or all of one color, uh, it's just, it's really hard and really annoying. So it's okay if it's an epic sunrise, but not so much with, with this kind of uh, setup we have today. Now I could do a bit of sky manipulating, sky replacement later on, which you may, you may come to that, but we'll, we'll see. We'll try not for, right? We'll try not for. Now, the other challenge with jigsaw puzzles is the boats have to be stationary. Everything has to be in focus. Otherwise, it's hard to do the jigsaw and it looks rubbish by the time you've done it. And you want people to appreciate your photography as they put each piece together, which requires a lot of focus. So my Z-mount lens on the Z-body creates focus. So I would encourage, if you want the most focus, use the best lens you have. And um, I've now just zoomed in. So if I punch in a bit on that previous shot, so here's the previous and then I punch in on that new shot which do you think is better if you were doing a jigsaw which would you most enjoy doing maybe somewhere in between or maybe somewhere a little bit narrower we're gonna have have a play and have a move around until we're happy with the composition that we've arrived at you'll see too from this photo that the boats are blurry but they're not ridiculously blurry which means there's not a lot of movement out there which means you can get away with a longer shutter speed the longer shutter speed in this particular scenario makes the water look better. You won't get a great deal of cloud movement today because there's not a lot of clouds in the sky. There is that big bank of cloud which um, we can't do anything about but hopefully that'll be really pretty. It'll light up a pink or an orange. It'd be great if it did that and it had some definition in it rather than just a chunky like blobber. The different shots require the preservation of different uh, um, attributes of your camera or different points of the exposure triangle. So sometimes you want to preserve aperture to create a bokeh effect. Sometimes you want to preserve shutter speed to create a motion effect. Sometimes you preserve ISO because you're shooting astro. Um, but not really because astro, no, ISO is the variable. ISO is the one you use to make the others look good. Yeah. Some of you can relate to that. You're like, I'm the one who gets used to make others look good. Yeah. It's very, very important. Very important. And, uh, well, we're just waiting for the sun to come up now. 
and part of me always regrets getting up this early because blimey it's cold and it's dark there were some people kayaking before <laughs> oh, give me a camera and a hoodie any day yeah, here's my composition look at the settings so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my settings down to once I get the bus 30 I get my light meter on the right side so let's turn my settings down to say 13 seconds and let's increase my ISO up to say a thousand that should expose pretty good f-stops good I'm just gonna make sure I'm as focused in and I'm focused in as much as I can be and then we're gonna shoot see the cloud the cloud looks fascinating from this direction here's the shot for you guys to look at it's pretty good I don't mind the cloud coming across the top there it does have some texture to it kind of creates a bit of a ceiling and there's also a bit of reflection for the boats so that's looking pretty good I'm also had it pretty happy with the composition I punched in more and I've knocked these rocks out see these rocks down here it looked distracting before but now it compliments has a lot of interest all the way through the shot which is what you want when you're taking a jigsaw puzzle shot because I have a foreground it's important that the foreground's in focus as well so I may need to take two photos one of the foreground and one of everything else or I may be able to pick up the detail in the foreground as my aperture climbs up to around 16 or 18 not that that's preferable but the lens I've gone on is a high quality lens so I shouldn't lose any quality because I'm shooting on a northern ended aperture uh, but also to make sure everything's in focus so I can just get away with one shot and we're just now waiting we're waiting on the Sun so let's wait with the time-lapse you'll note that today I'm shooting on a very shortened version of my tripod and the reason for that is because we have close foreground so sometimes the foreground is not close but today it's very quite close so that's the foreground here so we've got a little bit of this in the shot just here and then we've got these rocks in the shot that you can't quite make out now and what this does is it if I shoot lower is it sandwiches the shot and it decreases the amount of dead space in the middle of the water and so yeah we've got some reflections but the reflections are just streaks like this and so it, it decreases that and enables the sky to sort of be stretched ever so slightly and feature at the foreground so if I shoot down the water's like this but I shoot like this and the water is significantly uh, reduced in the size and therefore doesn't distract and monopolize the shot but instead complements the boats and that shot which I'm actually going after today as I've waited throughout the morning the cloud that big bank of cloud look at this shot the big blanket cloud has moved over so the, it feels like there's this diagonal strip of photo from the top right hand corner to the bottom left hand corner I just love that it's just just the composition has kind of come together perfectly and gloriously we had some kayakers come through before and so we had these streaking lights and so I fired off a couple of shots in a row that I can combine those later on uh, what you can't combine or what you'll find very difficult to combine is the masts so you see the masts you can't combine the masts with the background so you can't take for the background and then expose for the foreground you have to get the background sunrise with the foreground boats in a single shot otherwise you will spend the rest of your life photoshopping it you can do it but I, each to their own there's also been color variation so like we've got the orange and yellows here and then it's gone through to pinks and magentas and purples through here but this cloud just here on the underside has been lighting up with some red which has just been beautiful we've got some reds down here too and so I'm ex exposing for them because I know when I get back home and I pull it up on the monitor it's going to look slightly different than it does on the back of my camera and I want plenty of options I can bring up some of the shadow in here so hopefully that will become a feature rather than a blob now very interesting tension is created as the sun comes up so as the sun gets brighter and brighter here this gets um, the dynamic range increases between here and the shadow of the boats and so when this was darker you could expose you could see the detail of the boats as this gets lighter the boats become a silhouette and so you have to play around because you don't want this just really bright because there's detail and color and glorious just <laughs> in that part of the sky that you lose if you just have an exposure like this where you might be able to see some of the detail of the boats so it's just this balancing act of back and forward back and forward and just just weighing up each shot to get exactly the um, the, the uh, exposure that you're after and then what I've done is something a little bit cheeky 
put a filter on the end. This is a three stop filter from Nissi and it enables uh, me to retain a 15 second and then I can go a six stop and then I can go a nine stop and then I can go a 10 stop and then I can go a 13 stop and then I can go a 16 stop and then I can do a 19 stop because I've got a three stop, a six stop and a 10 stop and you can just layer them on top of each other in different configurations to uh, accommodate the light. Now. It's, the colour hasn't finished, there's still now some beautiful oranges, let me just see if I can, no. Nah. Some beautiful oranges in the sky, so I'm going to keep taking photos, going to keep working on this um, until we finish with our final photo and here is our final photo and then we'll talk jigsaws. <laughs> I've been running round in circles chasing my tail and lost my way Seeking shelter in different corners, never finding a place to stay Somehow ended up here on the ground For tomorrow's shoot, I'm going to buy one of those arctic, like, whole body suits and gloves it's so cold. See, it's pretty, it's pretty special. Now, why do I know a bit about jigsaws? Uh, I've learned a lot about jigsaws in the last little while because my customers are very, very fussy. How can you say that about your, your customers? Because my primary customers are my, my mum and dad. <laughs> they love a jigsaw. And so I use um, jigsawgallery.com.au that's an Aussie based one, there were a lot of US based and UK based ones that, that wouldn't ship and, and deal with Australians, understandable, we're a, we're a dodgy bunch and so I use um, a Jigsaw Gallery um, and you want a unique cut so, so when, you, um, when you find a Jigsaw distributor you want to make sure that every single piece is unique right so that's very important otherwise uh, different pieces of the jigsaw that don't match colors can fit in different parts of the jigsaw that you never knew about I also um, I find about a thousand pieces is a really um, appealing amount to your audience people don't want a bigger jigsaw than that generally but they also don't want a smaller one and that allows for um, just a, a good image to have a good spread on each piece uh, there is a price associated with it but what people are doing isn't going down to your local thrift shop or op shop and just buying um, a thousand piece uh, they're actually buying something special that you created that they can show your friends and um, they, they could even if they wanted to they could lacquer it up and frame it so it could be like a double gift there you go if you want to buy a jigsaw off me buy a double gift and you can just stick it in the frame afterwards and have it as a a photo um, it's just been really interesting and niche space to move into but a a good a good landscape um, photograph for a jigsaw has to have a couple of things it has to look good it has to have a interesting um, subject that is busy so you don't have a thousand pieces or 500 pieces that are just blue sky or just murky water it has to have a variety it has to have a variety of colors and options within the variety so you can't just like I did a drone shot of some rocks which I just love and I sent it to mum and dad and they did their heading because basically every piece looked the same even though the photo didn't look the same so that's Oh, hang on. Oh, it's special this morning. That's what happens when you're facing away from the sky. I should vlog to you like this, but then you get this rubbish. I suppose you just get white when I turn it around anyway. Ah, oh, the pinks. The, the pinks are stunning and the sun is coming up. And it turns out that I said here, photo pill said here, and the sun is coming up in the middle. Yes. Halfway between me and photo pills. Come on. It's what we're after. It's one of those photos that looks like it's got a, a pink tint over the top of it and I haven't even just looking on the back of the camera. Oh, it's so good. I usually set my white balance to just auto because I always correct it or manipulate it in editing later on. I don't think that's really a big deal. And you could also get different shapes of jigsaws. So you can go square, you can go your, your classic 6x4, or you can go some pano. And so uh, have a look around at the different distributors and, um, and pick the one you like. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's fun, isn't it? With the one I, um, I dig one, and it was, it was kind of, it wasn't a really good product at the end of it. And then they, um, they altered their 
the the mechanics and the, the way they did it and then they sent out another one to replace the one that had been sent out so how nice is that um, there'll be links in the description below if you're keen on that you can even buy a jigsaw from me or if you want a photo from me that you want to turn into a jigsaw because you live in a different part of the world we can talk about that too just get in touch um, but uh, I hope this encourages you to dabble in the world of jigsaws and particular scenes like this um, where you've got a lot of boats the way to go. Hope this has been encouraging and helpful and insightful and you've been less freezing than I have this morning. Please subscribe, like and all the rest of that gear and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I've been running round in circles chasing my tail and lost my way Seeking shelter in different corners Never 